Good morning, ma'am, and welcome to Shekinah Glorious Faith Ministries. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us your wonderful testimony? Good morning, church. My name is Valencia. I'm with my sister here. Her name is Damaris. She's from Limpopo. She's coming here for the second time today. Ma'am, you can continue with your testimony. Okay, our testimonies goes like this. On, okay, let me try to be a little bit brief. Around May, she started being sick, and then she was rushed to hospital. It was on Sunday night around 10, when I got a call from home, and they're telling me that your sister, she's sick, she's vomiting, and she's complaining about the pain on her left hand, and she can't even talk the way, she's even shaking, she can't even talk. Like, that thing, it took me by surprise to say, I spoke to this person in the morning. So what happened? Then uh, they said to me, she didn't even uh, manage to go where she's staying. Uh, the driver had to drop her off here. It was one of our relatives, because the way she was, you could, they were afraid to leave her alone in her room. So, okay, fine, I had to wake my husband to say this is a problem here. My sister, they're saying she can't even talk. She's just vomiting and she's complaining about the pain on her left. We started praying over the phone. We prayed, we prayed until 11, 12. And then uh, the woman who called me, she said, I'm trying to call the elders at home and we can't find any of them. So that's why we had to call you because we don't know what to do. We don't know whether we should take her to hospital or not. Then I said to her, can you just give her the phone even though you are saying she can't even talk. So when they were giving her the phone, I could hear her breathing so hard, but she couldn't respond or say anything. Then my husband took the phone and started praying, praying, praying. And when she, he's praying, that's when he started responding. We said, can, can they take you to hospital? She said, no. Then that night we had to pray until midnight, Sunday, that Sunday night. Then the following morning they had to rush her to the doctor. So I had to call one of my aunts to go and be with her at the doctor as well. So when they get there, my aunt, uh, she gave me the call to say, hey, I don't know what's going on with your sister. Because we were, we were together yesterday and I just don't know what happened. Even when I look at her today, she even changed. She's in yellow, 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 yellow. I don't know what's going on with her. Then when she got there, the doctor prescribed the medication for her and they booked her off for that week. So during that week when she's taking that medication, she couldn't get better to a point that they had to rush her to the clinic. When they take her to the clinic, they had to put her on the drips. They had to check her sugar level because she's been suffering sugar diabetes from 2016. Then when they're testing the sugar level, it couldn't even read the way it was so high. So they had to rush her to the hospital. That's when she was admitted in hospital. So the same day, okay, on that Monday, I had to send Mamulungi the message and Sister Musa the message to say, my sister, she's not feeling well and she's worse because she can't even speak. Ma'am, can you please confirm that that is your sister on the screens that we are seeing? Yeah, that's my sister, but this picture, it was the, the, uh, when she was submitted as the second time in September. The one that I'm talking about, it was in May. So that's her when hospital around September. So ma'am, you mean to say that your sister had been in and out of hospital? She has been in and out of hospital. So ma'am, can you please tell us, when, you're, when you came with your sister here to Shekinah Glorious Faith Ministries, please tell us what is it that happened? Okay, that when she, it was when she was admitted for the second time in hospital, where she just started, it just started as a flu, and then, and then all of a sudden it was getting worse to a point that they had to take her to hospital again. So when they get there, that time I didn't understand what was going on because it was Saturday so I got a call on Saturday to say she's in hospital then I was like okay can I talk to her they said no they are not even allowing her to, to have the phone because she was saying things that like I, we, we can't, I can't even tell because she kept on saying to the people to say can you move you are disturbing me they are calling me that other side you guys are disturbing me move, move from my way so on that Sunday she slept in the hospital Okay, on that Saturday, Sunday service, it was that service of the Petlock service with Prophet. So that Sunday I came, okay, I spoke to Mama Lungi. Mama Lungi said I must be on the prayer line on her behalf. I was, I was on prayer line and I got the mediums as well. So I came here and I kept, like, I kept on going to the toilet to check 
how she, is she is she responding now because she was not responding at all on that Sunday on that Saturday night so on that Sunday I came the prophet prayed for me and I told the prophet to say my sister she's not okay she's in hospital she can't even speak then the prophet prayed and say you don't have to worry about your sister uh, she's okay and there won't be any emergency okay I left the church with the mediums on that Sunday I didn't go to work because I was not okay at all. So I had to call on Sunday to check on how is she doing. So that Sunday, it was his son who went to the hospital and my aunt. So when they get there, she was not responding. They had to call the son to sign the forms for him, for her, because they wanted to do, they, want, they said there's a lot of water on her lungs. So they want to drain out that water. So it's something that is too risky because that water, if it can, can reach a certain level, she will end up losing her mind. It will damage her brain or something. So they, send the, they signed those forms and they started draining that water. And when my aunt is explaining to me that there's a lot of water that came out of her and that water was so dark, they couldn't even understand what was in that water. So on that same Monday, I had to pack my bag Sunday. I, Monday, I had to travel back home. When I get there into the hospital, okay, I was supposed to meet, be there for 12 um, visits, so I couldn't because of the transport that got delayed, so I had to do the afternoon. So Let the us visit. look to our screens to see our mother here receiving her healing when she came here on prayer line. Good morning, Prophet. The lady be beside me is my sister. She's in and out of hospital. Yes. She has been having sugar diabetes since from 2016. I'm not hearing you. The lady that is sitting down is her sister. She has been having sugar diabetes since 2016. Okay. And she was currently diagnosed with a lung infection. Okay. Where is the medical report? Where is your medical report? Where do you stay? She's in from she's from Limpopo. Who is she to you? She's my sister, man of God. Forgiving. Amen. Amen. Your sister forgiving. Amen. And what are you feeling now? Will you come back to give testimony? When I come back. Will she come back to give testimony? Yes, man of yes. God. <clears throat> when do you want to come and give testimony? September. This September. Yes. Father, hmm? your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I stretch your hand upon thy daughter. I declare right now, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Free in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To weakest spirit. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Touch your breast. Touch your chest. Say, I'm free right here, right now. I'm free. Right now, I'm free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go and come back with a new medical report. Amen. Ma'am, can you please tell us after seeing after the prayer that your sister had received, what are the changes that you had noticed in her? Okay, she, after she came on Sunday and the prophet did let a new medical report for her, 
on the coming Friday, it was her checkup date. So she left here in Kauteng on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, she went for checkup. When they got there, the doctor sent her for, for the x-ray to check the pneumonia because she was taking treatment for pneumonia. When they get the results from the x-ray, the lung swelling, pneumonia was gone. So on the same Friday. People of God, it says here in Jeremiah 33 verse 6, Behold, I'll bring it health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. Ma'am, can you please hear a word from your sister? Good morning, Mama. Mama, can you please tell us while you are being prayed for by Prophet Isaka, what is it that you are feeling during the prayer? Tobela. Ebevan Rapella, more Namu, Wobona Lipin, and a Chow Tava Tabakam, Kokutunkam. When the prophet prayed for me, I had pain inside of me. Pem Ukajola Pili Mama. When they were praying for me, I hear the pain inside of me, even behind of me. While they were praying, then the pain starts to stop. And ma'am, since you have received the prayer till today, have you experienced the same pain? No. Let us put our hands together for Master Jesus, peace with people of God. <laughs> Ma'am, after the prayer, we saw that, what is it that happened after you went back home? Uh, I check up on Friday. I fit a doctor's and check up on Friday. Pneumonia, I saw and then we can experience a least we can ever go deep. Then for that Friday, Kaya High, Ekis Naked was Petele, the Saturday, Kaba High Weekend, and then Kasandi Eki Homela Mrao, Ekita Mutiling, Manawa Kaumsh, my name for Nella, Rabakumane, a big snake, a Eve Chork Green Mamba, Mo Mojartin, Kurmo, Mo Lape, Katurki Bejuan. So by the following Monday through, my sister Mama said after she got her report from the hospital in her house at home. She found they found snake in front of the yard. Agir mama, in front of the yard they found the snake. Uh, she was vomiting uh, the the foam. Yes, the foam. You and then kafuna la maratua kaka mchawa rape melo kau thaka thaka ni ki ki atacha ni atacha ma pilo amawaite armonar eriki phone le ku kiriki and then afunya la ku kiriki. Okay. Um, she said she was vomiting. While she was vomiting, she phoned her sister. The sister told the church, then they prayed for her. While they were praying for her, she went to the hospital, and her sugar was uh, above 10. Then she get better while they were praying for her in the church. Ma'am, we see that document on the board. Can you please tell us what does that document say? Okay. Medical report to Ubotalusagam Hulur Lama Tomevan diagnosed Tikahona. 
pele ya nivel la mafele bo bontsha hore di 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 pneumonia a isa le hona and sugar diabetes e fast this that is on the board is my medical report which shows that everything is being cleared i'm no longer having those diagnoses ma'am after the snake that you saw in your yard what is it that you what are the changes that you have noticed in your home and in your life in my life the changes ke bona nkita ba ya sugar diabetes level because hanchi be ba high high na ko ngwe ba bo 19 it's the first time after the snake and everything e ba less than 10 ma'am can you please share with us your word of advice Ah, o cargo tsa molaetsa wa hao hore o reng ko go rena a ka mora wa se se dira itseng o wena. Ke rata o le bo modimo, ke bone bogolo ba modimo. Ka she kaina and even I want to thank my sister ka tsela ya mpontsitseng hore a re e takeno na mela from Limpopo o tekeno krekeng o to khumana pholoho. And then ke khumane pholoho ka ra kreke ya she kaina. Ka lebo. Uh, mami she saying she thank uh, this church she thank god of this church because she got she got saved from the sickness she got healed uh, a healing from the sickness uh, while she was experience the sickness so she loved to thank god in all that he has done for her ma'am can we also hear a word of advice from your sister e o ka re botsa mantsu ya o rotloetsa o re rotloetsa mo se se direleng ho wena My word of advice is that uh, people of God, these mediums, they are working. Because the day I went to hospital, my sister, it was like she's losing her mind. She was chained on the bed. And when I speak to Ma, uh, Mamlungi, she said, did you peace in that ward? She was alone in the, in the ward because they were saying she's distracting other patients. So after that day, that day I did let peace with the anointing oil, oil in that, in that, in that ward. The following day I couldn't believe my eyes when I get in that hospital my sister was calm and the f- a day before she couldn't even recognize me she couldn't re- even recognize her daughter but the following day it was a miracle for me because it was something new it was something else because the way she was to be honest to me I don't know it was the mercy of God because all of my family they could see that there's no life here even the sisters they couldn't believe they even told her to say the same god who saved you if he can comes today and he comes and touch every patient in this hospital we believe they will all stand and they will all be healed they've never seen something like that in their lives they've never so my word of advice is the mediums these mediums they are working because even the the following day when she was calm they all wanted to see what what is it that i'm using because since i came to that hospital on tuesday she was something else like she changed they wanted to see i could see them on the windows to say what is it that i'm using to pray for her so i was using this anointing oil i will wrap the, her body and i will put the cross on her forehead with this anointing oil and i will put a big cross on the on the wall of the ward and declare the peace of god as mamlungi said so and the other thing she said i must get a warm water and mix it with the anointing oil indeed i did the warm water and mix it with this anointing oil as well and i gave her to drink that's the first day she went to the to to the toilet so when she was standing on her own to go to the toilet she found herself chained and she couldn't understand why am i chained on this bed so the sisters they came they said you know when you can't stand on your own you can't walk on your own when you are unable to walk so she was surprised to say why are you say i can't walk i can walk on my own so they had to call other sisters to say this one she wants to put us in trouble she's saying she can walk and she can't walk on her own so you can see how the condition it was so it, everyone they couldn't believe that she's the one who's rising from all from that bed so i just want to thank god from mamlungi the support that you gave us everyone in the church sister musa when every time when i send messages you always there all the 
women of uh, divine connections. I thank you so much. Ma'am, we thank you so much for sharing your wonderful testimony and we thank you so much that God had used you as a point of contact for your sister. We hope and remain that this, perm this testimony shall remain permanent in your life and great things are to come in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.